We've got an ID match on the body. It's one of the missing girls. Michelle Jansen, student at GSU. Anything else? We're still running through the database for more information. Good. Where the hell is forensics? They're on their way, sir. All right, you guys. Make yourself scarce. I was hoping you'd show up. She's been dead for at least two hours. Yeah, a homeless guy came up this way and found the body. It's clear who was behind it. Suffocated. Yes. Traces of clay in her mouth and nostrils from what we can see. We're waiting for forensics to do a full analysis. We can't be sure yet, but from what we can tell, she was sexually assaulted before he killed her. Clayface. But why? This isn't his usual M.O., and why make it so obvious that it was him? It doesn't make sense. It's a message. Clayface is a shapeshifter. Even though we know he's behind this, we have no way of tracking him. Yet. Great. So he's laughing in our faces. Have you noticed the marks on her wrists? What is it? Rope burns. From the look of the abrasions, she was held down pretty tightly. She wasn't meant to get away. But she did. And he made sure she wouldn't talk. Commissioner, I thought you'd want to see this. We did some digging on the victim, and it seems she's connected to the girl that went missing two days ago. Harriet Reed? Uh, yeah. Apparently they went to the same church. Small building just on the outskirts of Park Row. I'll check it out. I guess it would be wishing too much for it all to be a coincidence. Two girls go missing within two days of each other, and one of the men's are brutally assaulted and murdered. And the traces of the clay would suggest one of the many clay faces. Mr. Hagen, perhaps, or the actor fellow, Carlo. I'm running a diagnostic on the sample of clay found on Michelle Jansen's body. At the moment, the only lead I have to go on is this. My word. Apparently, its pastor is a William Thomas. According to this, he did some missionary work in Africa before moving to Star City and then moving his ministry to Gotham. Why here? To help the lost souls of the city, Alfred. In actual fact, he comes from Metropolis. He started off as a small-time hood working for Intergang. He decided to go on his own, becoming a so-called faith healer, following in the steps of other healing con artists like Peter Popov. A few contacts helped him secure a new identity and a false history. Ah, another chap exploiting the desperation of others in a pursuit for wealth. Would seem like it. He's made hundreds of thousands from the people he's apparently healed. It nearly came to an end six years ago, when a woman died of cancer. Her family tried to sue Thomas for claiming that he had cured her, but he wasn't convicted. Ghastly. There's a whole list of them. People being told not to take their medication because they were cured, which led to their deaths. Others committing suicide after paying out large sums of cash and still being classed as a sinner. So far his work has been penny alley, nothing like murder and kidnap, but monstrous all the same. And what does all this have to do with Clayface? Only one way to find out, but I have my suspicions. Planning on going in your Sunday best, Master Bruce? No, I think an old friend of mine could do better snooping around than Bruce Wayne. How are we to be saved? How can we have our sins forgiven? And today for you folks, I come with an answer. I come with an aim. Jesus Christ. Now folks, when I was in Africa, I saw some terrible things. Disease and famine, the end results of war, a people who were at their end. But despite all this, they had one shared hope, one shared love. The love of Jesus, the crucified and resurrected Son of God. I knew then that I was born to preach his word to folks like you in cities such as this, where crime is rampant. But I'm here to tell you that you needn't fear. So long as you have faith in God, he will protect you. He said to me, William, you must go out and smite all elements. You go out and crush the work of Satan. Smite them with your fist. Today, folks, I plan to do just that. Is there a, a John O'Neill here with us today? Uh, John O'Neill? Are you John O'Neill of 244 Cradle and Broom? That's right, sir. John, the Lord is telling me something. He says that about a year ago you were shot in a mug. That's right. In your left leg, and since then you've been walking with a cane? Yeah, that's right. Well, today I'm going to remove the devil's work from your leg. I shall remove those demons of hell from you, so that you may stand tall in the eyes of the Lord. 
Be gone, Satan! Take your demons out of the leg of this man, that he may walk in the light of the Lord! Remove all trace of evil and wickedness from this man, so he may be free once again! How do you feel? I feel great! You can walk without the limp! I show everyone here today that you are free of Satan's evil! Oh, hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Who was he? I don't know. I never saw him come in. Come on. I don't want him snooping around. Can I help you? Oh, hey, great sermon today. Well, thank you. I don't think I've seen you here before, Mr... Oh, Malone, but my friends call me Matches. Well, Mr. Malone, what brings you to the Parish of the Lie? Well, Pastor, I've not been what you call a saint, if you know what I mean. I got involved with the wrong people and did some stuff I ain't too proud of. I was hoping I'd be able to help myself find the right path coming here. You've certainly come to the right place. I hope to see more of you, Mr. Malone. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be back after this. You know the way you healed that guy and knew all about him? It was as if you had a voice in your ear. What do you mean by that? You know, the voice of God, a little guardian angel sitting on your shoulder. Oh, yes, uh, yes, of course. I gotta shoot, Reverend, but I'll be back again sometime. Follow him. Make sure he keeps his mouth shut. Well, where'd he go? So the trap he healed was a plant. No, his reactions were real. Then how could this Pastor Thomas know so much about him? The voice of God. Or the earpiece he had in his ear linked to one of his men. Everyone who went in through the front was asked to fill out one of these. Name, address, family life, past and present ailments. How thorough. However, that doesn't explain how he cured the fellow with the walking stick. A placebo effect, Alfred. Nothing more. That man was so desperate to be healed, he believed it was possible. So much so that he convinced himself that he was relieved of pain. That, coupled with the adrenaline rush of being chosen, the applause, attention, the constant barrage of religious terms by the pastor blocked out any pain. It won't be long before he starts to feel it again. But more importantly, I'm still no closer to discovering the missing girl and what any of this has to do with Michelle's murder. But I think I'm starting to work out Basil Carlo's connection to all of this. The horror movie actor? Yes, the analysis of the clay revealed traces of Basil Carlo's DNA. Looks like I'm going to have to pay the pastor a visit. After hours. Stay calm. You're safe. I'll get you both out. No! You don't know what he can do! I saw what he did to Michelle! He was gonna do the same to me! Batman? Thank the Lord! You gotta help me! Uh, there was this man, but he wasn't a man. He was this thing, this creature, and he locked me down here and- What's going on down here? Batman? What's going on? Don't let him near me! Drop the masquerade. It's over, Carlo. Carlo? I'm afraid you're mistaken, Batman. I'm Pastor Thomas. Oh yeah? Then who the hell am I supposed to be? This was my racket, you freak! What the hell happened to honor amongst thieves? Shut up. But I just want to help them. God wants me to help you. Like you helped Michelle Jansen? What was it? She realized that the miracles in the show was nothing more than parlor tricks? I guess I should have known that the world's greatest detective would figure it out sooner or later. Taking on Pastor Thomas's identity was quite a challenge. I'm not a religious man. I had no idea what sort of shit I had to spin for these poor schmucks. But with a bit of study and looking at how the real Pastor Thomas came out with all this crap, I was able to pull it off pretty good. A good act to make sure he does his homework. Poor Michelle came to me, confided in me about her sexuality. She wanted my help. I told her the only way to clear the devil's effects on her mind was by bodily cleansing. Doing it the way God intended. I always was a method actor. You sick, twisted. It would have been a lot easier if this girlie hadn't found out what was going on. She found Michelle down here along with the real Pastor Thomas. I saw him come to Gotham with that con racket of his. I gotta say, I was impressed. 
A real stand-up performance you used to give to those followers of yours. You could have had me fooled. I was amazed by how in-depth his notes were. He'd done a stand-up job, bank details, addresses, and a group of guys relaying all the info in his ear by radio, as if he was being told by God. So I thought I'd understudy him and take the loot for myself. Of course, that meant I couldn't let either of them go. Not after they knew I was merely impersonating a guy who was already a fraudster. An actor playing an actor playing a healer. They should make a picture. When Michelle managed to escape, that was when I offed her. Now I can get rid of you and the girl all at once. Put her down! Ah! Run! No, you don't! How about I show you how I killed the girl? I won't let you upstage me this time! Time for the curtain to come down, Batman! Hey! I'm not finished with you two yet! Carlo! Huh? Time to see the light! I've been better. Basil Carlo took on Pastor Thomas's identity in a hope to take over his con scheme. He raped Michelle Jansen and was forced to murder her when she got free. Harriet Reed discovered the truth and was held captive, awaiting the same fate. That monster's going back to Arkham where he belongs. Hopefully he'll stay there till he rots. Thank you, Batman. May God's love and will protect you. I have no idea why this clayface monster decided to impersonate me, or how he could do something like that to one of God's children. But if it weren't for you, I'd have been killed. God bless you. I'm sure you were sent by heaven. Wait a minute, Pastor. I think I know why Clayface decided to impersonate you. He had you figured as soon as you walked into Gotham. You can't prove anything. He realized you were conning people out of their money by getting them to pay you for healings and to ensure a place in heaven. Before he became Clayface, Basil Carlo was a famous actor. What better way to put his skills to good use than playing the role of a pastor, your role, and then taking the profits? Oh well, that's an excellent theory, Batman, but even if it were true, you have no evidence for your wild accusations. I'm a man of God. I've been sent to do his will. I'm sure everything was burned up in the explosion. God does things for a purpose. Be seeing, y'all. I'd be keeping an eye over your shoulder from now on. I'm going to be watching you. You'd better start praying, scum. God is more forgiving than I am. Do I make myself clear? Uh, Crystal. Let it go. He'll slip up somewhere. We'll get him. But how could anyone be sick enough to exploit people like that? More to the point, why would anyone believe that any of these miracles were real? Desperation does strange things, Commissioner. But it seems like there is no other option. Some people turn to the wrong thing, or take a path that others seem strange. Believe me. I know. Take a wrong path, Avis. Is that what you'd like to think? Oh, please. You're not going to get all angst-ridden, are you? I can't use you like that. If anyone is being used, then it's you. You've got a mess to clean up. Something I will do. But you can't run before you can walk. We need to keep our eyes on our Dark Knight and the rest of his little family. I've already made the necessary preparations. I swear, this is your last chance. If you fail this time, I'll make sure- th Oh, huh. This is all a big puzzle. If I explain it to you now, there would be no fun in Batman's failure to solve it. After all, that's what riddles are for.